Hi guys and welcome back. Today is going to be a very quick and basic tutorial on how I draw my eyes. This is just a really close up version of what I draw when I'm doing any of my illustrations or sketching. So if you're curious, this is the process that I have. So at the very beginning, I'm just showing on top of some references how I break down the shapes of the eyes themselves and a little bit on the order that I like to draw them. So I almost always start drawing them from the inner corner of the eye outward. So usually the inner corner, then the top of the eye, and then the bottom. And the reason I do that is because when I am starting to draw the eye, they are usually, I've already started with the shape of the head itself and then a center line down the face so I know where the middle of the face is. So when I'm doing the inner corner of the eye, I'm able to get the placement of the eyes a lot more accurately than if I was starting somewhere else within the shape of the eye. So once I get that down, I really just start tweaking it. It does not have to be something where it's where I get the first line correct and it has the right shape. It very much is a push and pull thing where I start to chip away at it and get it into the shape of the eye that I actually want it to look like. And now we can jump into me actually sketching one out. I like to have a lot of fine details in the eyes. I feel like it adds a lot of interest to it and I'm able to show a little bit of their character depending on what details I like to show. So I like to focus a lot on the folds within the inner corner of the eye and the eyelid itself and how that wraps around it. I love the volume it gives, but also a certain heaviness to the eyes, which I actually really like showing. So I do like to find ways that I can incorporate little tiny little line works that build up this idea of the eye. And sometimes I like to do little scratches near the eyes or I emphasize certain bags or wrinkles to really just show that there's a character behind it. And a lot of times I tend to prefer eyes that are a little bit more angular. A lot of them, they will end in a very sharp point on the edge. I do try to round them up a little bit so they're not so artificial looking, but I do like that basic triangular shape almost where it comes to a really sharp point. And if you're having problems with figuring out where to place the eyebrows, it's pretty easy once you figure out the basic steps. So usually, this is just a rule of thumb, but if you take a line from the outside of the nostril straight up, is approximately where the start of the eyebrow is going to be. And to find where the arc of the eyebrow is going to be, you take a line from the outside of the nostril on the same side up through the middle of the eye and then continue on upwards. And that is usually the peak of where the eyebrow arcs and then comes back down. And this is definitely something that changes a lot depending on the face shape or the person. So it's really fun to play with these details, but if you're having trouble at first, this is really helpful to just get a placement of where to put things. And finally, for the tail of the eyebrow, you can take a line from the nostril again to the outer corner of the eye and continue it straight onwards. And that's usually about where the eyebrow ends. And now I'm just sketching out a few different eye options. This is the thing that I love drawing about eyes the most is because once you learn the basic formula of how to make an eye look like an eye, you can really play with it. You can emphasize shapes and lines to push what that character is and how you want them to look. I, like I mentioned, I usually tend to like really long, narrow, sharp eyes, but if I wanted to have a character that looked more soft or innocent, I can have them more rounded out and have more gentle curves and less sharp corners. And I just love that fact that I have so much control over how the final look of the eyes are and how it tells what that character is and who they are. And it's really fun to play with. I definitely recommend practicing drawing from an actual eye and then moving on to abstracting it so that you can really push and stylize the shapes that you're finding there. And another thing that I love doing when I'm drawing eyes like this is I really like to emphasize the curve of the eye to show the three dimensionality of it. So that last one that I did where the eye is looking upward, I really push that top peak of where it has this upward arc. And then the bottom eyelid was a lot more flat and straight. And this next sketch that I did after that, where it looks like it's looking downward, I have the eye bowing downward almost. And I love finding ways to really push the eye in ways like this, especially when I want it to look very specifically like the type of character that I want. I can have this downward facing sharp eye to show a little bit more of this sinister look or something that's more mysterious or dark. And 
the top one for me at least looks a little bit more soft and hopeful and being able to use the shape of the eye itself to show those character traits is incredibly exciting. It's fun to find different ways you can incorporate that and it's always exciting when it feels successful that you feel like you've captured that character down to their eye shape. And when it comes to drawing eyelashes, I tend to prefer to be a lot more minimal with them. I don't like going in there and drawing a lot of small lines all along the full top lash line. And the reason I know that is because I've tried it. And that's the thing about drawing eyes and drawing things in a stylized way is that you can try things to know that you don't like it or to know that you do like the look of it. And that's why it's so fun to work on eyes is because there are a lot of ways to depict it and to push it so that it has that character and the style that you want. But for the eyelashes, I like to be very angular with them and specific. So I usually show them at the corners of the eyes and if there's a sharp change in direction. So like if you're looking at the eye at a three quarter angle, I might show a few eyelashes in the middle of it just to show that it is wrapping around, that it is a three dimensional shape. But I almost will always put a wing at the end in the outer corner of the eye to really have this elongating effect where it's really sharp and angular and I like that. And a lot of times on the bottom eyelid, I will have a few little sparse, sharp little lines to have these little eyelashes. And that's just the fun thing. It all is entirely personal preference. I choose to have more minimal eyelashes while you maybe like to have lots of really long, luscious eyelashes. It's these details like that that can really push it to being your style and the way that you like to create it and the way that you want to have a final result. And when it comes to the pupil and the iris, I actually like to do things very non-realistically. I like to do the iris and the pupil very angularly. So the pupil, I almost always will go in with just like a line and build up a little bit around it just to show a little bit of detailing inside of the eye. And then the iris, I will a lot of times have it more narrow or sometimes a little bit more oblong. I just like to have it a very faint, almost inhuman look to it. I've spent years trying to figure out if I wanted to have it more realistic of an idea for the eyes where I had it very circle based, like a circle pupil. And ultimately I prefer them like this. I like being able to push this really faint line work into it. So that's again, just a personal preference detail where I spent a long time trying to figure out how I wanted to represent the pupil and the iris. And I did a lot of trial and error to finally get to the point that I knew what I did like in the eyes and what I did not. And for me, I don't like having realistic circular pupils. And what I do like is having these animalistic ones. And that's a fun process to get to the point where I, I was spending a long time not knowing how to draw an eye in the way that I wanted it to. So when I finally got to that point, it was very rewarding to have put in the time that it needed. So really, it just means that when you're figuring out the style that you want to draw an eye, don't be too hard on yourself if immediately you don't feel like you know what you want to draw and you know how you want to draw it because it can take some time to finally arrive at that final point that belongs to you and that you know how you want it to be. And one of the final steps that I do to the eyes is I put in the highlights and I love putting in highlights. It's something that I didn't used to like, but I've started to warm up to it. I like to do it on top of the line work. I think it gives it a little bit more layering to it. And I just like being able to cover up some of the line work with it so that it has a little bit more of a shape to it. And this is something that's really fun to play with. Again, if you really want to push the direction of a light. So if you want it from coming from below and from a certain angle, you can really push that. I also like to use really long, thin highlights to show that it's glinting off the eye and that the eye is really wet and it has that shine to it. Or you can build up lots of little ones to show like there's lots of twinkling lights around their eye and give it this glittering look to it. So there are a lot of ways that you can show highlights that'll give you clues to the outside environment that they're in and to really push the lighting arrangement that they're in. So it's just really fun to be able to add those details again. And they hint at a story and they hint at an environment when you don't always have to go in and draw them explicitly. 
And that's it for today's little basic tutorial on how I draw eyes. Hopefully this was a little bit insightful when you're watching my larger illustrations so you know what I'm thinking about when I'm drawing them. But yeah, thank you so much for watching. I do post every Wednesdays and Saturdays. And if you'd like to support me, I do have a link in the end card as well as in the description that'll take you to my art shop so you can see lots of prints, originals, and buttons there. And I do post to Instagram a lot. So if you'd like to see more in between work, I'll have a link in the description as well to my Instagram account. And I think that's about it for today. So I will see you guys at my next video.